What do this guy and this guy have in common? Find out next. Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of the highest quality woven guitar, bag, and camera straps you'll ever see. Native Sons straps are handmade one at a time in the USA with unparalleled love and care. Click the link in the description to check out their new expanded lineup featuring all new 3-inch guitar straps. And remember, when you support my sponsor, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. Hello boys and girls, today we're headed into downtown Louisville, Kentucky to visit the Hillerick and Bradsby factory and find out just what Major League Baseball bats and electric guitars have in common. For six generations, the Hillerick family has been making the world famous Louisville Slugger baseball bat. Their great signature wall in the lobby of their museum showcases the thousands of baseball players whose names have graced their bats over the past century. Names such as Onus Wagner and Ty Cobb, Tris Speaker and Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and Jimmy Fox. The museum does contain a few overt hints of its close connection with electric guitars, such as this baseball bat Fender Stratocaster. and this collection of rock and roll signature bats. But in order to better understand the deeper connection these two industries have shared, particularly in recent years, we'll be talking to the company's director of future products, Bobby Hillerick, who also happens to be the great-great-grandson of the founder. I take it we're off the tour at this at the moment. Yeah. Okay. You know, Gibson took us to one level, and then when I was talking to our president, saying, "Hey, we have to up it even another step." Yeah. Got online, found this awesome video of Taylor's UV system. Talked to their uh, vice president of manufacturing. He said, "Come on out, take a look." Wow. The Finnish people happened to be in town at the time. They came and met us. They were here for a week. We picked the finish. They trained us how to use it, and it's just the coolest, baddest looking hard stuff that we could find. Uh, we went from a polyurethane to a polyester base. Okay. Last time we spoke, uh, like, like I said, you came to my house, it was like 2015, something yes. like that. You yes. said you had just gotten back from Gibson, and they had kind of given you some pointers on different ways you could finish, refinish your bats and things like that. Um, and I was kind of curious about, it was, what, what in particular did they, did they say that, that changed things? So what we were doing is just spraying the finish on and hoping for the best. Okay. And they said, that's all fine and nanny, but if you want that finish to pop, you gotta learn how to buff. Yeah. So they took us to their buffing stations and said, "This is kind of what you're gonna have to do. If, if you want to make, if you want to go from that decent-looking finish to a furniture finish, you gotta learn how to buff." So they actually handed us buffing compounds and some of their own wheels. Said, "Take this back with you." But also, since you're here, we want to train all three of you what that feel and look was. So yeah. we actually still use the equipment that they recommended for buffing and polishing now. So this, this, where's your buffer now? I can see one. Oh, I do see it, yeah, okay. If we need any touch up and it's not just quite right, uh, Gary takes care of it. Got the, the, the rough, the rough bust and the, the high, fine buff and he'll take out any perfections that he sees and he hand inspects each bat. We don't have to buff near as much with the polyester. It just goes on smoother, yeah. so we don't get as near like the orange peel that we were do, with do the polyurethane. It, do you make the polyester at all? Or yes, for three it? hours okay. after it's finished. It's, it flashes for an hour, then we bake it for three hours. Yeah. See, anybody who has ever refinished a guitar or finished a guitar knows how difficult it is to get this part right. <laughs> 
This is the part that sells the bath. Yeah, I'm sure. And, uh, there was a time when we would get competitors bats in that that's where I wanted to be. Right. We got a copy of a gentleman's bat in last week and I looked at it and said, you know what? We got this. Our bat's better than that now. Yeah, good. And it took a long time to get there. And it, we did it with all the companies. I mean, we worked with Fender, we worked with Gibson, and we worked with Taylor. They've all helped us a little bit. And in return, we shared our vacuum drying knowledge and our slope of grain knowledge to give them more strength and rigidity and how to keep their necks from bending. Yeah. And side which, note. Which they could use. Yeah. <laughs> they could use that advice. So side note, we have a gentleman who works with our pro bat players who got introduced to Jerry only of the Misfits. Okay. He, at the time, he was wanting to design an all-American guitar. And it's a bass guitar big black thing about this tall yeah. and we've now supplied him with 300 blanks and he takes our blanks and makes the guitar necks for his guitar. Very cool. Yeah. Where, where's he located? Uh, his plant is up in New Jersey. Oh, okay. His, I mean, one of his side jobs apparently is they own a manu uh, furniture manufacturing facility. Interesting. And so that's where they make the guitars at. Very cool. But also last time we, we spoke, uh, we kind of talked a little bit about uh, the ash tree forests and, oh, yeah. and all that stuff. I was asking about like the uh, the ash beetle. And yeah, the emerald ash borer is doing yeah. its job. Uh, probably 70% of the ash trees in our region have been decimated. The National Forest Service says we got about three to five more years. Wow. Uh, and then 95% of it will be gone. But uh, Fender and us and Louisville Slugger, um, and the National Forest Service and the Canadian government, they're already working on a hybrid ash and we're gonna start planning, hoping, hopefully in the next year to two years for an emerald ash borer resistant ash tree. Okay. Yeah. Now you also said something about there's a certain latitude uh, below which you can't make mats out of the wood. What right, if you, if you go too far north, the right. density, how it grows, the growth rings real tight together, yeah. and it's dense. So the weights of the billets go past what our players want, because our players want a typically a 34-inch bat that only weighs 31 to 32 ounces. Right. So if you go too far north, you won't get that near like you should. And it's if the you reverse goes, with guitars. They actually right. want, yeah, they want closer grain. So. Exactly. Yeah. And if you go too far south, start spreading out, they get too light, and the wood doesn't hold up the impacts very well. Right. So very they snap in half. So, so there's only a certain narrow band that you About can... 200 miles in, in New York and Pennsylvania that we found the best. So you, that's where you own your own groves? Are there or do you... Uh, mainly we work with about 30 different mills and they know that that high-end veneer wood, they'll, we will pay them more than if they just processed it. So they lay it out and we go in and inspect anywhere from 50 to 400 logs, rolling them and looking at them, and we buy the ones we want. Yeah. Uh, maple, that's become the norm. Uh, maple just really, really hit or miss if, if you just go through and cut. Yeah. And an average maple tree, only 2% of a standard tree will be used unless you know what you're looking for and have the proper grading capabilities to get it right. So we buy all of our maple laying on the ground. Uh, and 80% of all the major league players now are using maple. 15% are using birch and 5% now use ash. Was that was that a, a, a economics thing because the ash is becoming more expensive because of the borers, or was that you think a choice thing? Or? No, uh, Barry Bonds in 2002 broke the home run record with uh, with a maple bat. bat. I think it might have been something else that gave him that capabilities. <laughs> might have been a couple other things. Because uh, he didn't break any more records after that. Yeah. But uh, the credit was given to the wood, and it doesn't delaminate like the ash does. Yeah. If I had to pick and choose, if, if I only had one bat to use, birch right now is probably the bat of choice. It's going to give you that durability, and once it's quote unquote broke in, it'll hit very, very hard. Yeah. Is it uh, more resistant to breakage as well? Yes. Birch? Yes. I would think so. A lot of the guitar cabinets are made out of birch for that reason, I think, right. because it's more durable. All-Star Games coming up, 4th of July weekend, of course, and everything. And uh, you guys have partnered with Fender 
yeah. to do a limited run of guitars, special painted guitars and yeah. special painted bats yeah. that will be auctioned off. There's like 31 of them, right? Well, there's 30 auctions for the guitar and bat combo. There's going to be 225 bats that are for sale, and uh, Wilson will be letting everybody know about that very soon. Yeah, very cool. And uh, the reason that the the combination was due to the fact that uh, Cleveland's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and you know, when you think uh, baseball and guitars, that's kind of what came out. Several players uh, use it, and they're excited. I was really drooling over the uh, the uh, Cubs strat. Oh. <laughs> I'm a big Cubs fan. Who's your team? I'm never going to answer that question. Uh, <laughs> I tried to. I almost had you. Yeah, you did. You. I, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an awesome sport. Uh, I've enjoyed my interviewing with many, many players that either use our bat or don't use our bat. Uh, I got to interview uh, Christian Yelich when he first came up. Amazing player. And he's just, he said, I just came up last week. Why are you talking to me? Is it because you're using our bat. Yeah. yeah. So wow. Brandon Phillips was my most hilarious interview. He was just a cut up and a lot of fun to deal with. So. sold in an hour and 25 minutes. Yeah, oh, I bet. <laughs> it was like nothing else we'd ever seen. I saw that you guys did that special run and I almost bought one too because I was online and I was really looking at them. <laughs> my dad, my grandfather, my uncle. So you are fourth generation, is that Fifth. right? Fifth generation, Fifth, yeah. okay, wow. You don't, you don't see that too much anymore. No. So what this is, before our CNC machines came out, we would have a line of 15 or 20 people behind the lathes handcrafting the bats, and it'd take anywhere from 25 minutes to 30 minutes to carve a bat. And when Babe Ruth's model would come up and he would put an order in, they would actually come up and pull his model out of the rack, lay it in front of them, and with a set of calipers, they'd go down the bat and they'd match it. Right. So every, every player has got a model. Hank Aaron is A99, Babe Ruth is R43. Uh, it, it just goes down the list. We have 3,500 different models. Every single one of these bats is different in some way, shape, or form. And then ever since 2003, all the models since then have all been digitally impacted. So there's probably another 1,500 above and beyond what's in here right. that haven't been done. So when you replicate a bat like this, do you do like CNC? Do you scan it or? We do now. Just yes. high tech now. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Yeah. Amazing. You know, to try to get a gentleman uh, to carve out 12 identical bats, oh, yeah. plus or minus three thousandths of an inch. It's hard to do. Made it a little easier. <laughs> yeah, when we first got the CNC lays in, oh, you're trying to replace me. It's like, no, no, we need you focus on the wood, focus on what that player wants, and make sure that that's what happens. Yeah. I'd much rather you make sure that the player gets the perfect piece of wood than worrying about if you missed a spot. Right, and exactly. Once we got that through, it was pretty cool. Ironically, there's Yeah, there, so we, there's, yeah. The, there's the devil there. So here's it. Yeah, see that's that's still uh, oh, know. the old the old style is still my favorites. So you know, it's a copy of Ted Williams' order card. So no way. Whenever he ordered in bats, 47, 46, 1943, 42. He's he's probably what number two greatest hitter of all time behind Ruth. Well, yeah. Average-wise, he actually did better. Oh, yeah. Just, 
Ruth's more well known. I think uh, I think OPS is a pretty good measure, and, and they're, uh, him and Ruth and Gary are like just, <laughs> they're like right there. Wonderful. Thank you so much. All I right. really appreciate all your time. No problem. Okay, guys, that will conclude today's presentation. I'm glad you could join me today in historic downtown Louisville. I hope it was as fun for you as it was for me. I'd like to thank Bobby Hillerick for having us today and for sharing his stories of how three great American guitar companies, Gibson, Taylor, and Fender, have all helped contribute to the improvement of the great American baseball bat, the Louisville Slugger. <laughs>